I have a dual alternator setup. You can kind of see it down here. And there's a sump space. This is where your jack is, some of your tire changing tools. Take a look at this, at the ceiling here. I have six auxiliary switches. Here's a heavy duty hitch. They redesigned it. Let me do a little acceleration. Whoa! That was a huge spin. Here at TFL Truck, we make you a promise. You saw it here first. And I think that's the case here because this is the all new 2023 Ford Super Duty. This is a two door work truck. It's an F350, it's a one ton. And in this video, I'm gonna show you all the way around it, show you the price, take it for a drive and maybe do a, an acceleration so you can see exactly what the 6.8 liter V8, yes, the new V8 under the hood, what it's capable of. So let's uh, get going and take a look at it from the side. So you may have seen our introductory debut videos already uh, on this new truck. Um, the chassis largely remains the same. They've made some modifications in the back um, towards where the hitch area is. Uh, but overall, the underpinnings and the size, the wheelbase and the size of this truck remains the same. But they're calling it all new. And why is that? Well, we can go over a, lo a lot of those points. The truck I have here is a fleet truck, uh, four-wheel drive one. And you give us uh, complaints usually. Oh, your trucks you're reviewing are too expensive. Well, this one is more basic. That's why I'm doing this video. So talking about the engine. So let's pop the hood and then I'll show you inside after that. All right, so popping the hood, let's open it up. So the other reason why they're calling it all new is because a lot of the sheet metal is new like the fenders of course the grills and the lights and the front end and also some of the other hood elements okay so let's take a look underneath here so obviously there's a lot going on so this is a 6.8 liter v8 so what is going on here because they used to have something called the godzilla the 7.3 liter v8 well they downsized the displacement on that gas big v8 engine and made 6.8 liters out of it uh, the horsepower rating is currently somewhere between 400 and 405 horsepower so that's already a great number and the better number is 445 pound feet of torque so pretty pretty solid power and it's made it to a heavy duty 10 speed automatic so no more 6.2 liter v8 no more six speed automatics uh, all of these are now getting 10 speed automatics this is quite interesting so take a look at this i have a battery on the driver's side i have a dual alternator setup you can kind of see it down here and dual battery so there's another battery right here on the passenger side as well and you know a lot of these parts you know some of the connectors um, i used to own an f-150 2021 uh, the recent current generation f-150 and then when i look at some of these parts um, I'm reminded of my F-150 truck and I think that's because a lot of them share a lot of the components especially on the inside so the 7.3 liter engine is still there you can still get that at an additional cost so you wanted an affordable truck for review well this is it this is how you can get an affordable truck and this video would not be possible without our friends at Ken Garf Ford at Ford Greeley and especially John Winnicky. So thank you, John, for actually helping me get my hands on this truck. So come around in the passenger side and I'll show you in, inside. Here on the inside, uh, this is where I'm really reminded of my older 2021 F-150. It's hard to imagine older 2021 truck, but that's true. Um, well, let's take a look. So first of all, the seats, of course, this is a bench orientation. So you have some storage down below you have as you move the seat down kind of some of the same switch gear it makes sense to uh, you reuse the same components uh, these cup holders are pretty much the same as mine and there's actually an extra cup holder 
or I'm sorry, cubby here. I have my action cam in here for now. So it's a fairly deep place. And then, let me get this Monroney, I'll show you the price in a second. But then, I also wanted to show you kind of behind the seat. So let me get over here. So take a look. So there's not a lot of space here in the two-door regular cab, but it seems like there's a little cubby. There's a little cubby down here, and there's a, some space. This is where your jack is, some of your tire changing tools, and of course, vinyl floor. But uh, you couldn't probably put a lot of stuff inside here, although a small toolbox will probably fit. First of all, uh, the key is very familiar, so if you've seen recent Ford keys, uh, you'll be very familiar with this. And still has a key, so it's not a push button start. Put it in, brake. <laughs> yeah, this is the more basic one, right? Um, and these are the trucks that Ford is building first, this case. So they're not, um, according to some of my information from Ford, they're not building like the super luxurious new Super Duties quite yet, but they are building these. So some of the plastics, you know, are kind of basic, but I like that this is open and this is rubber. So some things you can put here easily. There's also a very nice uh, glove box here. I think these are USB-C, 12 volt. A lot of the switch gear, I like kind of these rubberized knobs, especially on the climate control system. Another 12 volt, USB-A, USB-C. So actually a lot of power choices here. Um, this one has four wheel drive, like I mentioned. Um, so that's a four high, four low, and a locker and it has drive modes and a trailer brake controller. Um, so that's pretty cool. If you focus on the gauges, let me help you a little bit here. I'll show you some of the drive modes. So normal, slippery roads, off-road, and when you leave it in a certain mode, of course it can change not only, you know, the throttle mapping, transmission mappings, uh, but also when you go to for example, the off-road mode. By the way, they're showing a crew cab truck here. Look, it automatically shifts you in four-wheel drive high. And actually, it's selected the rear locker is engaged. So you can kind of do it with one motion. You can put it in off-road mode and it'll automatically select for high and the locker for you. Of course, you can disable the locker go to too high or for low, whatever you want as well. But it kind of tries to make it a little bit easier. This truck also has cruise control, some of the menus and buttons. So you have, for example, your truck info, towing info, maintenance. So it's using kind of their latest architecture as far as what's underneath um, this system, off-road status. Yeah, so it's very familiar. It looks a lot like what my F-150 had. Of course, they're not identical. Like this area here is unique to the Super Duty. In the F-150, there's another cut line on this interior, which makes it a little bit difficult, different. Um, of course, uh, 10 on the tree, not three on the tree, but 10 on the tree is here. And take a look at this, at the ceiling here. I have six auxiliary switches. This being a fleet truck, and John at Ford of Greeley um, works with fleets. Uh, this is really excellent because you could turn this truck into a plow truck, um, working truck with extra lights, extra equipment, maybe a winch, and you can control a lot of that using the auxiliary switches. There also should be some of these trucks also have the latest upfit integration systems. So if your truck is equipped, I actually did a demonstration of this in Indianapolis 
So if your truck is equipped with that, you could also have um, control some of the items of the upfit, for example, like a crane or a bucket truck through the system here. Let's go out again and check out the bed and then take it for a drive. So this is an eight foot bed. And look, they do have a step on the side of the bumper. Uh, of course, GM started this and Ford is kind of using their own version of this. There's also a side step on this side so you can actually reach in. This truck is quite tall. It is a four by four and it does have a few things like the um, mud flap as well. But look, look at the springs. This is an F-350, so I'll show you the payload. You won't believe it, how much payload it has. But it has have really, really beefy springs. Then, this is not damped. Of course, it's a basic truck. It's also not bed lined. Um, and that's eight feet of bed. So a huge space. Over here on the tailgate, there is a measurement system. So from very edge to very edge, it's about 60, 61 inches. So yeah, it's a humongous space. They say about three cubic feet. I'm sorry, three cubic yards <laughs> um, of total volume. You could actually put back here. Here's a heavy duty hitch. They redesigned it right here. So it's easier to hook up your chains. Um, this will tow a heck of a lot. I don't have all the ratings, but I can show you the payload. Bam. What do you think about that? 4,965 pounds. <laughs> Because this is a basic truck, because it's an F-350, uh, you could probably put an F-150, a basic one, in this bed and still drive with it. That's how much payload uh, this truck has. Okay, enough talking, let's go for a drive. All right, enough yakking, right? Let's, let's go for a drive. Cool. All right. Where did I put the key? Oh, it's here. Okay, yeah, you heard that V8, manly. I like the um, column shifter, although it has kind of a light feeling to it. It could be more substantial, but this is a work truck after all. All right, let me go. So there is no sport mode per se, right? There is eco mode, which I love, that they actually added it to this truck. Um, not just because it's a perception of economy, uh, but also because I think it'll actually do well, especially on a long trip. Maybe not on the city, but maybe on the highway, it will actually help out just a bit. If you still want to get the 7.3, it's there. Uh, the 7.3 V8 is there, you can get it, it makes more power. It's uh, a little bit above 430 horsepower and 475 pound-feet of torque. Um, that was the rating before and they're, they're, keep, they're upping that rating a little bit higher. All right, so I found a side road with nobody here and let me do a little acceleration. Whoa. Whoa! That was a huge spin. That's 60. Sorry. Um, my traction control was disabled at the moment because I was thinking you know, I'll, I'll get maybe a spirited acceleration. I did not think, uh, I, well, I didn't brake torque it that much, but it did spawn it, spin its tires. There's no weight in the back. So yeah, it, it, for a base engine, the 6.8 liter gas V8, I think is plenty for most jobs. So why would you buy this over something else? So I think specifically, if you do have an eight foot bed like this, you would buy this for carrying payloads. Um, I think, I think there, this is where this engine would shine. You would also buy it for value. And in just 
half a minute or so, I'll show you the sticker and I'll show you the price and some of the options this truck has. Um, if you're towing, if you need a little bit more torque, maybe a little bit more horsepower, you would step up to the 7.3 liter V8 and you'll get more power and more torque and you'll also pay a little bit more, maybe $1,500 to $2,500 extra uh, approximately uh, for that engine depending on trim levels and options. Um, and then of course if you're towing long distance and you're towing super heavy, I'm talking about above 22,000 pounds, you'd go for a diesel and that's when you could pull those big big numbers, you can get a dually, um, and there's two diesels, diesel engines available. The quote-unquote standard 6.7 liter power stroke and the high output version. The high output is rated at 500 horsepower and 1200 pound-feet of torque. So yeah, all those options are available, but those high torque diesels will cost you well, at least $10,000, maybe $12,000, depending on which engine you buy. All right, let's look at the uh, final damage on this truck. Is 52,325 bucks, so low 50s. You might say, whoa, Nelly, hold on. So this truck has $2,715 of options. So if you don't get some of the things like slightly nicer seats, $100 dual battery setup, $210. Um, upfitter switches, which is $165. By the way, I love that, and that's fairly affordable for upfitter switches. Wheel well liners, $180. I think I would get those too. Snowplow prep package, well, it depends on what you're doing. Platform running boards, this truck is tall, so those are helpful. FX4 off road package, I would get that. It comes with a skid plate and a couple of other things. 430 rear electronic locking axle, um, $430. Um, well, this will give you a little bit better towing, and uh, you saw that it accelerates really, really well, all-terrain tires. So you can skip some of these, but I wouldn't skip all of that. And so I think for about 50K, if you skipped a few options, um, this is a super capable truck that will haul like you saw almost 5,000 pounds um, and then um, of course if you get a longer cab or a crew cab those prices will go up uh, of course um, so let me know what you think in the comments below I'll see you in the next one and uh, come back to oldtfl.com for everything automotive and first drives like this one